Hello friends and welcome to a series of videos I'm calling Tom Teaches Guitar. There is a wealth of amazing guitarists and guitar teachers on the internet, especially here on YouTube. But often the kinds of lessons that they offer are targeted towards more advanced or intermediate players or can be a bit intimidating on the music theory side of things. With these videos, my aim is for complete beginners to be able to watch and practice along with me so that even someone with absolutely zero background in music can eventually pick up a guitar and start playing along with their favourite music. I'll be covering topics from being able to name and identify the parts of both acoustic and electric guitars, reading tablature so that you can play along with music without having to actually be able to read sheet music, how to play chords and simple riffs so that you can play along with some of the most famous songs around, and hopefully even more. So with that being said, today we're going to take a nice close look at the guitar and learn what all the parts are, what they do, so you'll be able to go into your favourite guitar shop or favourite forum and not feel like everyone's speaking a foreign language. We'll start with the acoustic guitar, as it's generally simpler and a lot of the core components can be found on the electric guitar as well. The easiest way to conceptualise a guitar is to think of it a lot like a person. We start at the top where you've got the headstock, or head if you're in a hurry, which goes down onto the neck, which goes down into the body. Super simple stuff. The headstock of a guitar is usually the fastest way to identify a guitar's brand, as they typically have the manufacturer's logo printed on. But beyond that, there are a lot of headstock shapes that are also synonymous with their brand. One of the most famous modern examples would be PRS, who have this distinctive asymmetrical headstock design. Or Gibson's open book. The headstock is also where you find the tuning keys. These are used to change the tension of your strings, which in turn will change the sound the strings make when they're plucked. They go by a few names, tuning keys, tuning pegs, tuners, machine heads, or some variation thereof, but typically speaking, if you call them tuning keys, you'll be understood no matter where you are. Now, there are several different types of tuners, but we don't need to worry about that too much. They all do the same thing. Hold the strings securely at the top of the guitar and let you tune the instrument. The headstock is also where you'll usually find this little bell-shaped cover. This is the truss rod cover. Basically, underneath this, you can access the truss rod, which is an internal part of the neck of the guitar. We'll come back to that later. Not all guitars have this cover. Some just leave the truss rod uncovered. Some don't have one on the headstock at all, because the truss rod is adjusted from the bottom of the neck instead. The last part of the headstock, or the first part of the neck, depending on your mood, is the nut. This is a small saddle that goes across the fretboard and basically acts as the end point of the fretboard. These are usually made of plastic on cheaper guitars, but a whole range of materials are used as you go up the price range. Typically speaking, on higher end guitars, the nut is made from bone, uh, cow bone to be specific, which is used because it's extremely resonant but also durable. You see, the nut has to allow the strings to vibrate, and if it's made of something too dense, it'll have a negative effect on the overall sound of the guitar. There are a wealth of other materials used for nuts though, so if you're against the use of animal products for instance, you can always find ones made out of graphite, uh, ebony, different types of metals like titanium for instance, like the one on this Gibson Firebird. Now the neck itself is one of the two major parts of the guitar, the other being the body. Necks are typically made from mahogany, maple or rosewood, but there is a huge array of other woods used to build them. The type of wood used to build a guitar has a huge effect on the tone and the overall feel of the instrument, so it's a good idea if you have the chance to play a few different ones before you commit to one, just to see what type of guitar you're most comfortable playing. The neck is where you'll be doing most of the work of actually playing by fretting the various strings of the fretboard. Speaking of the fretboard, this is where the magic happens. The fretboard is essentially just a long piece of wood where you hold the string down with your finger and when you pluck that string it will make a different noise depending on where on the fretboard you're holding down. It's as simple as that. The way that we know exactly where we need to place our fingers is by using these. Frets. The fret is the metal strip you see across the board and basically acts in the same way as the nut that we saw earlier on the headstock. When you hold down a string on a specific fret, the length of the string is effectively shortened, which changes the pitch of the note that the string will play. It can be a bit confusing if you've got no background in musical instruments or specifically stringed instruments, but one easy rule of thumb is to think of it like this. The higher the fret, the higher the pitch. The vast majority of fretboards tend to be made up of some species of rosewood, 
as it's a very oily, porous wood that gives it a rich tone. But maple is also a very popular choice due to its brighter, snappier tone and lighter weight. Personally, I prefer the feel of maple necks, um, but it changes for every guitarist. It's why it's always a good idea if you've got the opportunity to play around with a few different instruments, see what you feel best for you, what, what feels best in the hand, what sounds best to your ear. If you've got a friend or a relative who has a different instrument to yours, or maybe they have a couple of different ones, if you can go to a guitar store and try out a few, that's always the best way. Bit difficult right now, I understand, but it's always good to play around. I, for instance, for years, I played nothing but rosewood fingerboards. But one day, out of the blue, I just got a maple neck Telecaster and by far my favourite material now. Like, it changed the game. Sound Unlimited has a great blog about the differences in the woods used for building guitars, which I'll link down below. I highly recommend you check it out. Most fretboards also have these, fret markers. These are a quick, easy way for a guitarist to tell what fret they're playing on, as they're usually placed on specific frets, namely the 3rd, 5th, 7th, 9th, 12th, 15th, 17th, 19th and 21st frets. Much like the headstock design, fret markers can be a good, quick indicator of what brand a guitar is, as certain brands tend to favour unique designs like Gibson's block inlays or PRS and their now famous birds. Now, the body of the guitar is where you'll see the biggest differences between acoustic and electric guitars. With an acoustic guitar, the body essentially forms a chamber where the sound can resonate by piecing together three main pieces of wood, the back, the top, and the sides. Acoustic guitar bodies come in a dizzying array of flavours, with spruce, rosewood, 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 and mahogany being among the most popular. On the front of the guitar, the top, you'll find the sound hole, which is where acoustics will project their sound from. The strings come over the top of the hole and end at this thing which is called the bridge. On an acoustic, the bridge will almost always look something like this. A block of wood with a thin saddle across it and six small pegs or bridge pins which hold the strings in place in the bridge. The bridge is where the acoustic and the electric differ more than anywhere else. But with that being said, we've covered pretty much everything on the anatomy of the acoustic guitar. And that wraps it up for this first video looking at the anatomy of the acoustic guitar. Hopefully after watching this you've now got a better understanding of the parts of your own acoustic guitar if you've already got one, uh, or if you're looking to buy one in the near future, you've got a bit of a better idea of what you're going to be looking for, what's going to be recommended to you when you get into the store, that kind of thing. If there's anything you want to know more about, for instance, um, an in-depth look into electroacoustics, uh, let me know in the comments or follow me on Twitter, at TomFoxMusic, you can always let me know there. I'm always happy to answer any questions uh, or just talk shop. If you've got any specific requests for videos or topics, uh, again, let me know in the comments down below. Um, I really want this to be a, a comprehensive resource for beginner guitarists to get all the help that they need, all the answers to any questions they have. There are no silly questions. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up, maybe subscribe. Um, on the other hand, if you don't like the video or my accent, let me know with a thumbs down and tell me in the comments. But other than that, stay safe everybody, keep learning to play, keep making music, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.